Who would be in your Manchester United dream team if you could complete all the signings that you wanted to this summer? I'm going to run through my own United dream team, complete with eight new signings that would transform this team into a real force next season. So what I want to do in this video is run through mine and of course I want to hear yours in the comments because this video is going to be very interesting to see what players you want to see Ole Gunnar Solskjaer sign this summer. Before we do get into it, if you are new to United People's TV, go down to the bottom, hit that subscribe button, hit the notifications bell as well. You get a ping every time a new video goes live. If you're a regular, drop a like on the video, but let's get straight into this one. Now, what I'm going to do is run through each position and explain the players in each position as well. So starting off in goal, of course, I'm keeping David De Gea in my team. Still, for me, without doubt, one of the world's best goalkeepers and United will be a much better team next year with him in it rather than him not in it. Whether he signs that new contract or not, I don't know. But in a dream situation, he does. And I would keep Sergio Romero as number two because he is the best number two. And if he was to become number one, could he be good enough for us? I don't want him to, so I hope I never have to find out. But he's a good number two. And I would put Joel Castro Pereira there. I'd let Dean Henderson stay out on loan with Sheffield United. He's come up with them. A year in the Premier League will do in the world of good. And obviously this means I'm selling Lee Grant. He's out of my squad. I thought it was a weird signing in the first place. And I don't think he should be here. But if Pereira, first team football and another loan spell it dawns for him, then maybe Grant stays. But that is what I would do in the goalkeeper position. Now moving on to left back. We've got Luke Shaw, and I would like to see United sign Sessegnon. At 19, he's got over 100 senior appearances. And, and crucially as well, he can play left back and left wing, both comfortably. And that would give us some sort of depth down a side, which we don't have much depth in. We need a good, natural, left-footed backup to Luke Shaw. That's crucial, because when he was out of form last year, we had Damian playing there, we had Ashley Young playing there. We had all manners of pup left backs playing there. Sessegnon would be a good understudy and maybe he can come through to be even better than Luke Shaw. But I think it would be a very astute signing from a relegated team, a young, hungry, talented professional. And I think Sessegnon could add a lot to the squad. So I think it'd be a good left back signing. And of course, I want Matteo Darmian sold. He plays left back, he plays right back, he plays centre back, he plays wing back. Can we just send him back to Italy? Darmian is just not good enough for United anymore and he shouldn't be playing for us next season. Absolutely not. Moving on to the left centre-back position. Yes, I am dreaming and yes, that's why I put Matthias De Ligt in here. Come on. He would be... He is going to be one of the signings of the summer, no matter who gets him, whether it's Barcelona, whether it's United or whether it's another club. But De Ligt is in my dream team and he's probably going to be in yours as well. 19, natural leader, looks like a generational talent. The sort of centre-back that at 19 is better than most centre-backs are at 25, 26. Certainly better than pretty much every one of our centre-backs at 25, 26 or however old they are. But I would put him in there ahead of Victor Lindelof, which some of you may say is slightly unfair. But United's defence conceded more goals last year than we did since the 70s, for crying out loud. I don't think you can really make a case for any of these defenders as good as they were in patches. And I think Lindelof deserves that place, but I would put him there as the understudy to De Ligt. And I would put Bayer down at the bottom. He's a mad as a box of frogs. Love him when he's on form. But next year is going to be the season where he gets one more season to prove himself, to show he can control his temperament, to show he can get over his injuries. If that doesn't happen, I think Bayer will be moved on, which is a shame because he was so good when he came at the start. And then moving on to right centre-back. And as you can see, I'm still dreaming. And that's why Kalidou Koulibaly comes in. The experienced world-class centre-back that could make all the difference to this defence, even alongside De Ligt. Look at that for a perfect blend. A 19-year-old already looks like a leader and a proper established top draw leader in Kalidou Koulibaly. What a partnership that could be. And Koulibaly, will it happen? I don't know. But he's in my dream team, absolutely. And I've got, and I've got Chris Smalling and Axel Twanzebi below him. But looking at the order I've done it now, I think I've got that backwards because I would want to see Twanzebe below Koulibaly in the pecking order and ahead of Chris Smalling. Smalling, Smalling, Smalling. What can you say about Smalling that hasn't already been said before? Twanzebe was fantastic on loan at Aston Villa last year alongside Tyrone Mings, one of the best partnerships in the championship. And he deserves the opportunity to prove himself at United. Maybe that isn't bringing him 
and then signing De Ligt and Koulibaly. But this is a dream situation. You need to have two good players in every position. And that's why I think Koulibaly and Twanzebi for that right centre-back. And of course that means goodbye Marcus Rojo, goodbye Phil Jones. Shouldn't be playing for United anymore. Phil Jones, man, he's been here for eight years. How much longer is he going to be a prospect? And then Marcus Rojo is mental and shouldn't be playing for United anymore. The guy just loves getting yellow cards, red cards. I remember a Luke Shaw interview with MUTV saying he's literally scared of going up against Rojo in training. That's the sort of defender he is, and it's not the sort of defender that we need. But the sort of defender we do need is Juan Bissaka at right back. Probably just as crucial a signing, I would argue, as a new centre-back, is a right back. Because we've had, we haven't replaced Gary Neville really ever. Fabio, Raphael. Raphael, certainly. I, I love Raphael, to be fair. But we've, in the last few years, it's, our right flank has been utter dog shit. Sorry to swear, but it's true. And Juan Bissaka could come in and transform that. And I've got Diogo Delot underneath him. And I think Delot can be a good right back. But I feel he needs to be an understudy next year. Somebody needs to be above him in the pecking order that he can look up to and be inspired by and learn from. And Juan Bissaka, clearly one of the best in the Premier League already at such a young age. I'd love to see that. I mean, that's a lot of defensive signings. And it's a lot of defensive outgoings as well. Because at right back, I put Ashley Young. Of course I put Ashley Young. And I put Timothy Fosu Mensah. Young can't be playing for United anymore. Sounds like he might be getting... The captaincy next year, I don't want to talk about that story, but let's see what happens there. But he can't play every week, for, you know, he shouldn't play at all. And Fosu Mensah, I'm sort of semi-surprised I put him here. But looking at the signings I'm making in this dream team, I don't really feel there's space for him. Didn't do that well on loan at Fulham. Did okay on loan at Crystal Palace, but it wasn't consistent enough. Fosu Mensah won't get, he won't get game time in defensive midfield, which he could be potentially turned into. But I just can't see it happening, not in this squad, not in my dream team. So both of them out. And that's a lot of signings in defence. De Ligt, Koulibaly, Wan-Bissaka, Sessegnon and his cover at left back. That would solve United's problems in defence. But there's a lot more problems going forward as well, especially in midfield. So let's start at left central midfield. And the player that you know I love is Ruben Neves. I've made it abundantly clear just how much I rate Neves. He could add so much into a midfield which has so little. Outstanding player at Wolves. Would cost a bit of money, but this is a dream team. So he's going in there, absolutely. And I think Fred should be his understudy and not Nemanja Matic. This team that I'm building here is not a team that's geared towards a slow, general type player like Matic. Someone who tries to dominate, but not move that often. Works for Matic, doesn't work in this team. And that's why I'm putting Fred as his understudy there. And then moving on to right central midfield... You know, there could be any number of players here. You could go Ndombele, you could go Bruno Fernandes, you could go Rakitic, who's now been linked. But I've gone for Wilfred Ndidi, who I've been so impressed by at Leicester. He's young, he's tenacious, he's got energy. Same sort of thing as Ruben Neves. You can see a pattern emerging in my midfield. That's what United need, and that's what will protect the defence, which is now going to be incredible, because we've got De Ligt and Koulibaly in this team. But Ndidi and Neves, they will be outstanding signings. And on the right central midfield, I've got McTominay as the understudy. And I think that's a fair position for him. He was one of our better players last year. He's not an incredible player, but he'll be a very good squad player for United for years and has the sort of attitude that needs to reverberate through this squad that isn't there at the moment. And underneath him, I've gone for Andreas Pereira. Now, I'm not sure whether he would get too much time in this role. Not in this squad anyway. But Pereira's there, and Pereira can also play a little bit better going forward as well. More of a natural attacking midfielder. And if you look at my attacking midfield options, we're looking quite thin. I made it clear that I don't want Paul Pogba to be sold by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Now, rumours are suggesting that he might be getting linked with a captaincy type role, whether that be vice-captain or not, in order to keep him at the club. But Pogba, yes, he's got attitude problems. Yes, there are problems with his agent. Yes, he flirts with Real Madrid all the time. Plenty of issues. But he's world-class, guys. He is the best footballer that Manchester United have. You don't go about rebuilding a squad by selling your best footballers. Build a great team around Pogba. I think we'll see the sort of Pogba that we saw in that purple patch where he was literally Europe's most informed player. Absolutely keeping Pogba in this team and having a Neves and Ndidi behind him, that's the curtain, the iron curtain that can allow Pogba to go and do what he wants going forward. And that's where he's at his best. And I've got Angel Gomez behind him as the understudy. Gomez, for me, is somebody I really want to see 
pushed forward into the first team squad next year. He's a top talent. Yes, he's underdeveloped physically, but so was Paul Scholes, and it didn't really stop him. I'm not saying Angel Gomez is Paul Scholes, but the size of a player shouldn't stop them from getting chances. If that was the case, we wouldn't know who Lionel Messi is. I would put Gomez there, and that means that Juan Mata is on my sold list. Now, Juan Mata could be a good understudy, and maybe I would be foolish to sell him here, given how short we are in that position, but I would personally rather see the minutes go to Angel Gomez next season than Juan Mata. You might disagree with me, but let me know what you think there. Could also play Andreas Pereira there as an emergency option, and Jesse Lingard can also play there too. Not brilliantly, but they can all play there. That's who I would have as my central attacking midfield options. Let me know what you think about those in the comments. Now, moving on to left wing, Anthony Martial is there, and so is Tahith Chong underneath him. For Martial, it is time for you to step up, fella. It really is. He's got the contract last year. He's committed to United, his future anyway. I can understand Martial throwing a hissy fit when United signed Alexis Sanchez. He was in blistering form, and as soon as Sanchez came in, Martial got pushed to the side by Mourinho. He lost his form, which was fantastic up until that point in that season, and he's never found it again. Martial's got major attitude problems, it looks like. I don't know from the outside looking in, it's what it looks like. And he's better than he's playing. So we need to see an improvement absolutely from Martial next season. And having someone like Tahith Chong underneath him as the understudy is a perfect sort of competition that might make Martial better. Because Chong, I think Solskjaer is going to implement a few academy players in this squad next year. And seeing as Chong has made his debut last year, it's fair to assume that maybe he'll be one of them. And I would like that. He looks very... Naturally talented, I wouldn't say he's ready for the first team, but that's why he's an understudy here. I'm not throwing him straight into the first team. And obviously you've got Ryan Sesson on. If you sign him at left back, he can play left wing too. So we've got options there. And of course that means Alexis Sanchez is going. And for me, he is the first name on the sell list. For this United team to rebuild properly next year, Alexis Sanchez can have zero part in that whatsoever. He's a major part of the problem and he's a major player that needs to go for us to rebuild properly next year. Then switching over to right wing, as you can see, Jaden Sancho's in my dream team. He should be in everybody's dream team. The 19-year-old Dortmund winger has taken the Bundesliga by storm and has come into this England team and done the exact same. His temperament, his ball control, his pace, his directness, his dribbling, he's everything you would want in a modern day winger. He's 19. He looks like he could change our right flank. Him and Wan-Bissaka down the right, instead of Lingard and Young? Yes, please. That's what I want to see. But let's see if it happens, but he's certainly in my dream team. Let me know if he's in yours. Now, I'm putting Jesse Lingard just behind him. I think Jesse Lingard can do a job for United next year, but like Scott McTominay, should be a squad player. Neither of them are good enough to be starting every week for United, but they have attributes that I want to see inside this squad. The right characteristics of a United player, I would probably say, not saying they're incredible players, and I understand the flaws of both of them, but I would keep both there, McTominay and Lingard. And Dan James is there. Let's see what happens next year with Dan James, hopefully after we signing from Swansea. Maybe he won't turn out to be anything, but maybe he'll surprise us all and be incredible straight away. That's what you get with young, exciting players, the unknown. And if the unknown works out, you unearth real gems. And that's what United have always done with their best signings over the years. Then finally, we move on to the striker role. And my three options there are Marcus Rashford, Mason Greenwood and Romelu Lukaku in that order. There's absolutely no way I would bin off Marcus Rashford because he had a poor end to the season. Rashford embodies this new look Solskjaer team for me. I want him as a spearhead. And we saw last season when Pop was on form that Rashford can be that clinical finisher. That goal he scored against Spurs away at Wembley, one chance, one finish, right into the corner in a game where Harry Kane missed plenty. Rashford had a terrible end to the season and deserved all the criticism he got. But Rashford, I would keep as my number one choice absolutely next year. And I would put Mason Greenwood in above Roman Lukaku. Mason Greenwood scored goals of plenty for our academy sides, an absolutely stunning season. And I would rather see him as the understudy ahead of Roman Lukaku, who I would probably sell. In, a dream, in an ideal world, maybe I should have put that. It's my dream team after all. But I don't think United will sell Lukaku. And maybe having someone who's big and strong and different to Greenwood and Rashford is a good option to have. 
But that's what I would consider Lukaku next season. An option, not a starter. Somebody who can change the game from the bench. Maybe a new Marouane Fellaini. Maybe that's unfair on Lukaku, but that's how I feel about him in the new look, this dream team that I'm building. So with all of those new signings, what would United's team look like? This would be the best starting eleven that you could get out of that. And it's hard not to be excited by it. De Ligt and Koulibaly there. wan at right back with Neves and Ndidi behind Pop, but with Sancho on the right wing. Woo! That is so much better than the current United squad. And I know this is a dream team. I know this isn't football manager. But I wanted to go through it because these are the signings I'd love to see United complete this summer. You've got Sessegnon there as left back cover. You've got De Ligt and Koulibaly, an experienced leader and a young leader. Perfectly balanced together with wan one of the best right backs in the Premier League, that's your defence looking a hell of a lot stronger. You don't have to rely on De Gea as much. Then in midfield, you've got Neves and Ndidi, both energetic and dynamic midfielders who could then create a curtain to protect our defence, but have the ability and the quality to bring it forward too. And then Paul Popper just in front of them with Jadon Sancho on the right-hand side, bringing a much-needed threat to our right flank. I mean, Dan James is there as well. Look, how would you not be excited? If United completed these signings, I know it's never going to happen. But maybe we'll complete at least a few of them in the key areas that we do need. And a key component about all of these signings is look at their ages. Sessegnon, 19. De Ligt, 19. Koulibaly, the experienced head that we do need, 27. wan over there, he's 21. Neves and Ndidi, both of them only 22. Jadon Sancho, 19. Dan James, 21. There's your new look, United. Out with the old, literally, in with the new and the young. That's the sort of summer that a rebuild truly is. Because if you look at the players on the sell list, Lee Grant, Phil Jones, Marcus Rojo, Ashley Young, Fosu Mensa, not old, but we've seen it at United. And it hasn't worked out for him because he went on loan. Mata, Sanchez. If you sell those players and you end up with that dream team, wow. United would be a force next season. And I know that all of these aren't going to happen, but I, that's what dreams are about, eh? Running through the ideal situation for United. But who would be in your dream team? Which of these dream transfers do you think will complete, if any? I really want to know what you think in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, drop a like and a thumbs up on it. Share it with your United mates as well. Get them involved. And if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you subscribe to hang around for more. Until next time, though, Take it easy.